Hello, my name is Austin Belzer, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, Austin Food Media. But before we get into this interview, I want to tell you how you can support my work. The major way I've done my work, whether that be through uh, renting uh, a movie and offsetting those costs, or paying for Zoom, my patron helps with that. Patrons like Envy Labula, Brian Scuttle, Justin Davidson, Sith Bob, Matthew Simpson of Awesome Friday, Tom Blackburn, and more all help make the episodes and interviews like this possible. So thank you to all you lovely patrons out there. If you choose to subscribe, you can do so annually and save 16%. On top of that, if you're not ready to subscribe for whatever reason, you can get a seven day free trial of every single tier I offer. Uh, all of that can be done at patreon.com slash austinbmedia for as little as a dollar a month. But with that said, let's get to the interview. Hello, people of the internet, and welcome back to Austin B Media, or whatever you want to call this. Uh, whether you're watching this on YouTube, it, welcome back to the channel. I also upload this as a podcast, so welcome back to your ears, I guess. <laughs> uh, but today, I am here with Andy Valentine, the director of... The Mattachine family, um, it's premiering at, it's having its New York premiere on the 15th at the 35th edition of New Fest, which I'm covering, and I'll probably have my review out somewhere around there. Premiered at SIF, Seattle International Film Festival this year, yeah. and just cavalcade of other ones like Frame Lane, 47, stuff like that. But for those who don't know what the Medicine family is about, how would you describe it? I like to say that it's indie dramedy that follows okay. a, a gay couple and their journey to parenthood. Yeah, so lots of, there are, there's lots of comedic moments. Um, in the film, it stars Emily Hampshire from Schitt's Creek, Heather Maserato, um, Nico Tortorella, Juan Pablo de Pache. So lots of humorous moments. And then also there are those, you know, tear jerking moments, you know, as, as the film progresses and our, our characters, you know, decide whether or not they want to become parents. Yeah, it, it was really interesting. I made notes about it uh, when I was w watching it because I was make, making the questions and writing the review notes at the same time. Yeah. And it didn't click until just now that even though I wrote this down, Heather uh, Matarazaro was mm. from Princess Diaries. And I just yeah. that just now clicked for me. And Nico was from Scream 4, which I just watched yep. a, a few yep. weeks ago. But the thing I wrote down was it manages to kind of walk this line between. I think I wrote it down like the comedy feels so natural as do the heartbreak and conversations is how I wrote it down. I probably had a more whippy, uh, snappy version of that in my head, but, but yeah. Um, but first of all, thank you so much for coming on. It's going to be a busy week for you, for both of us as well, with new fest. So let's get back into your background a little bit, because this is your not directorial debut. This is your feature debut. For those who don't know, you've directed music videos in the past for people like Charlie Puth, Patrick Starr, Tri Tritonol, and a bunch of other people who I'm sure people know. So I guess my first question is, how did you handle that transition from going to music videos to directing films? And how is that different from, from each other? Sure. You know, music videos is you're trying to cram a lot in within three minutes. And so you're also trying to create this like visual, spectacular three minute thing that can be cut down into TikTok. Oh, and, and you want to get the viewer's attention as quickly as possible, where like a film, you're allowed to kind of, you still want to get the viewer's attention right away, but you like start revealing certain things at, throughout, the, throughout the movie. And it's like at different moments of the movie, right? Like you don't give everything up front. Um, so like, you know, that was a big learning curve, I think, when, you know, like I developing the scripts and like understanding how I want to shoot it. Like all of these things like are, they had to happen at the right moment, you know? And so you figure that out, I think in the development process a little bit while you're shooting, but then also heavily in the post, 
you know, post-production phase, there was like with Mattachine, there was many, many scenes that were moved around that were meant intended to be over here and ended up being over here just because it felt more natural and it felt better, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. It's funny you talk about the TikTok thing because as you were talking, I was thinking about what was the last music video I remember? And it feels weird to say this is a throwback, but like the, there was a period in which music videos were shooting at the same place in LA. Oh, was it She's So Mean for Matchbox 20? Like the warehouse with the, like the square yeah. lights and everything. Yeah. Where it was just like, they're just standing, the bands are standing around in this like empty yeah. warehouse and yeah. with the spill lights and everything like that. Yeah. And, but yeah, it, it is interesting to see kind of how that's kind of shifted over the, mm. since I guess the TikTok talkification of everything, yeah. Um, yeah. especially, I guess, since I brought it up with Charlie Booth and his kind of workflow now, where the, what if it sounds like this or that? And yeah. then, yeah, but we're not here to talk about TikTok, but I guess, you know, you talk, there. there's this there's a stylistic flair to the Machine family where I wrote it down. It There's this these narration bits by Nico. And I wrote it down like it was almost like a Polaroid style kind of true crime documentary esque yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. And I wanted to ask, were there any, was there any like inspiration for that? Like it maybe a specific film, maybe a director you were looking at for that? I mean, the like idea of, I guess like the, you know, the narration sequences with photos, they're not, it's not, like, not necessarily like incredibly original. I mean, it's like, we, we looked at beginners a lot as like a, as like a reference, you know, for, for those moments, but it was, it, it, it helped us kind of to a give like the film, like an interesting, like unique hook. And then B allowed us to get into the character's mind a little bit more. And then C it like knowing that the lead character is a photographer, like seeing his photos and seeing stuff like through his lens, it just like lent like a little bit more, like you understood the character a little bit better, you know? So um, yeah. And that was like that whole process of like figuring out what that was going to be, you know, it, it, that took a while to like, is it just plain photos on screen? Is it like a gimmicky type of like, it's it's within a Polaroid frame? Is it like in a film strip type of thing, which is where we ended up landing on? You know, it was like, we went through like many iterations of being like, well, what's cheesy? This is too cheesy. This is not, you know, okay. It can be a little bit cheesier, you know, but it, yeah. Yeah. And, and there's a certain line, which I won't spoil um, near the end of the film where he talks about, how he shoots pictures that was really uh, kind of neat, neatly ties everything together yeah. because you talk about, you know, through his lens. I mean, he's literally through his lens. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. He but, feels it's like a photographer when they take those photos, it's like, we're, we were trying to say that even though it's like, he's not in the photo, it's like, he's still part of that story because he's participating and he's, and he is like capturing that moment, you know? And so yeah. in his mind, it's like, this is something that he wants to remember. You know, it's like all, it's like, what was it? Friends or what was it like? No, it was, I'm trying to remember what show it was like. It was something about like, you know, it was like, oh, they took like a Polaroid, you know, it was like a little gimmicky thing where they like took a thing. They were just, you know, they didn't have a Polaroid, but they just went like this so that they knew, like they would remember the moment. I don't remember what that's from, but anyway, something like that. Anyways. I had a similar moment with, with one of the quotes in the movie. I Sometimes stairs are just stairs was one I wrote down. Yeah. Yeah. I I, like, I, I, where do I remember yeah. that from? Yeah. Yeah. That's a funny, I like that line a lot. Because I think that there's like within movies, there is like a lot that you can analyze and like look deep into certain moments. And then uh, some other times it's just, it's just stairs. Like it's just, it's the simple reason, you know, um, yeah. which I like um, about um, cinema just in general, because you can get really deep in one in in some specific area that the filmmaker intended this like very specific thing that's that's you know the subtext is like hidden within or it's just like it's red because there was a red shirt on on set you know it's like you don't know 
what you know what the intentions are but anyways yeah and i guess going back to the seeing th things through the through his lens i don't think it's entirely lost on me that this movie is about family and uh, you made this with your husband mm -hmm. danny i believe yep, um, yep. so i guess i want to ask what was that process like collaborating together on the story and how did you maybe put yourself into this yeah so the the movie was kind of based on real conversations that Danny and I had had about fatherhood you know we had dated for a while and then we got married and then it was like you know I think that Danny had wanted a child as soon as possible you know it was like he was ready to become a dad and I was like not necessarily against the idea, but I was like, I, I, I feel like this is like, this is something like down the road. And especially with LGBTQ plus folks to have children, it is like a planning thing, right? Like it is not for the majority of us, you know, not for, not in case for everybody, but for the majority of us, it's like a financial planning, whether that's adoption or surrogacy or foster care or whatever that is, like you have to be set up to be able to, financially to be able to do those things. So I think in my mind too, as being like the more like practical person, you know, the practical spouse that I was like, okay, well, it's got to be later when we like actually start making money and not when I'm making, you know, $300 directing, editing, producing a music video. But it was like to to work with Danny, you know, on on that was just incredible. And, you know, we really put in a lot of our relationship into the lead characters, as well as like a lot of our friends and our lived experiences are all like sprinkled throughout the film, you know, so it's it is it is fun to when we watch the movie back or when we're at a screening or we're with, you know, with our friends, you know, who come to a certain screen, depending on what city we're in, it's like, oh, this moment's from remember when in high school or whatever that is, you know, there's a lot of that, like fun, fun little nuggets sprinkled throughout. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, especially some of the stories that were told, I, I really felt like came from maybe personal experience. But yeah, and I guess getting to that, something that really... And I, I don't know why I keep talking about this movie so much because I keep bringing it up in interviews. I, I don't know if you saw it at last Tribeca, the one that just happened. Our son kind of dealt with this similar thing where we're seeing a lot of more mainstream movies where couples are already married instead of that kind yeah. of typical thing where, oh, this is the meet cute, although that is still happening and there's nothing wrong with that. But I, I just kind of wanted to... I guess, ask how, how you wanted to portray a kind of married queer couple in, in terms of like, you know, it's it's kind of been, in my opinion, new or at least put in the mainstream this year. So yeah, any thoughts? Yeah, I th yeah, I think that like a lot of queer cinema is like based on the idea of like accepting identity or it is the coming out phase. So it is like, which those are like crucial, you know, crucial aspects that all LGBTQ people go through, but that's what had been our focus in media for so long and in film and TV, you know? So we liked the idea of managing family, which it, it kind of like pushed past some of those things. And yes, we like touch on like, um, accept like a little bit of accepting identity and well like yeah. honestly like what identity is in terms of like being a gay dad like what is that like but you know we wanted to like push past that and like see a you know a gay couple that were you know for the most part like you know like you said there's like the me cute at the beginning but then the, for the most part like they're together like in a relationship you know and and are having to deal with big questions on whether or not they want to become parents or not, you know, and these aren't necessarily things that we have seen previously. And of course we've had like modern, like representation is great yeah. and we've had modern family, you know, but modern family wasn't necessarily like asking those like hard questions. Like it wasn't, you know, it, it kind of um, went, you know, cause it's a comedy show. So it went past kind of the bigger, the, the big questions, the big fights for just, um, you know, everything else. So, yeah. Yeah, it didn't really get into the interior spaces is kind of what I'd 
refer to it yeah. as is, is yeah. where and I guess where I come at with the comparison with our son is it also dealt with for those who hadn't seen it uh, I feel like I'm plugging this all the time now even though it doesn't have distribution but it, it dealt with Billy Porter and oh gosh the new guest Luke, Luke Evans yeah a divorce which is I I'll, I'll, I'll be honest I hadn't really seen that before and I think you're doing something similar here where it's like, oh, you don't really have to see that, how they um, met or this is yeah. how they are now. And here's the, because, and I don't think this is spoilers, um, it starts with Arthur already being, what would the proper term be, given away? Like going back to his home. So I, I, yeah. the I, the movie, it's like, we're met our two characters, Nico Tortorella and Juan Pablo de Pache, Oscar and Thomas, where they had had a foster child for a year. And so they were just fostering the child for the year. So it's his foster child, Arthur, goes back to his mom. So and then there's all of those complicated feelings of, of what that means. Yeah. And and I guess going back to I keep zigzagging, but, you know, we were talking about stories earlier and. There's this character, oh gosh, what is his name? The person who lives with Nico's character, of oh, the best friend. Gosh. Oh, um, Jamie? Jamie. There's, like, there. I guess what I'm getting at is there's different, it's not just uh, Oscar and Thomas. There's also points where you go into a, a lesbian mom party and kind of go into, uh, I think, all not all the specter- sectors, but I think you really kind of go out of your way to go, hey, there's, here's the, the entire spectrum of, I, there's this one line, I, I wish I wrote it down, but I think it, Thomas says, why do I have to be gay? Why can't I just have, say I have sex with men? Yeah. I think it's like later on, but I guess I just kind of wanted to get into how you want to, I know this is a really cliche question, but to talk about the different sectors of here's how different, gosh, sorry. Here's how all these different people interact with one another. Like here's yeah. here's how Thomas interacts with the, the, this lesbian couple. I forget their names. I, I, I see the actors' names and then I forget. That's good. Yeah. I think that like one of the other kind of big themes of the movie that we wanted to hit was the idea of chosen family and yeah. within the, the queer community, you know, whether or not you're rejected from your actual family, like no matter what you tend to form a chosen family. So you have that like core group of people that you, you know, they're your friends, but they consider you consider them family. So, you know, we wanted to explore that as well and see how, you know, the idea of parenthood affected all of those chosen family members. So, you know, throughout the movie, Thomas, Nico's character, like encounters and like hangs out and has like, you know, emotional scenes with his chosen family, you know, and we get to kind of experience, you know, a little bit of what that looks like as like the as a friend, as the best friend, you know, so Nico is there. So Thomas is there as like the shoulder to cry on when necessary, as you are with anybody in your family or chosen, or if, you know, chosen family. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And sorry for the long wind up and everything. Yeah, you're good. It's, yeah. I, to be completely transparent, I'm still figuring out how, like, this is kind of uh, recently this year has been kind of a learning experience for me. <laughs> in really just kind of trying to sit with learning, okay, how can I represent a, how can I talk about LGBTQ plus cinema as somebody who is by all means straight? It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of that thing that where I've just kind of been trying to learn over the past few months, especially with, our son, I was trying to learn terminology yeah. and that. So if, if at any point I'm just no, no, no. I mean, no, anything no. that I need to cut out, you just, you can just yell cut because I don't want to ask like cliche questions. 
you know, I, yeah. I, I don't want to ask stuff where, you know, an AI could have come up with it or anything like that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I, I definitely think, um, it, it's a, it, the Metachine family is a really interesting one because kind of going back to the narration, it kind of almost breaks it, the movie up into chapters. Yeah. I, the note I made was it kind of makes it almost like a TV show in a sense yeah. of like, yeah. hey, here's the end of that one arc. Let's go to this yeah. next arc. Yeah. And I guess I just wanted to talk about how you approach writing that, how you approach kind of structuring it out. Because it's not a three act structure. Yeah, I th I think it's like I looked at. Well, I can't really like. I mean, when Danny and I like set out to write the movie, like we just we wrote it in the you know, and Danny wrote the majority of it. I did more of the story, but it was like we we put it together as like a traditional movie, I guess, of like yeah. how how it unfolds. And, you know, this is when this beat should happen. This is when this beat should happen. And then when we got it in editing, we realized that like some of those emotional beats were in the wrong spot in terms of, you know, of getting the audience on the character side and, and what that all looked like. So, you know, it's interesting that you thought of it as chapters because I also like debated whether or not putting like chapter markers in the in the film and literally writing like chapter one this you know which is like a device that like filmmakers do you know sometimes to, like break, yeah to, to right to like break things up or to you know do interesting things for it but I ended up not doing that but the but still like so I broke them up into these moments you know so it is you know the first 20 minutes like this is how what this establishes these are the scenes that we that we hit that have that have the like emotional beats necessary to sustain like the audience attention for these 20 minutes and then we move on to the next 20 minutes you know so yeah good good analysis yeah i i because i tend to overthink things i, I was just talking about this on the creator podcast where i was talking about over analyzing things you know i always talk about i figured out the ending to arrival 10 minutes into the film yeah, yeah. so i'm just over analyzing a lot of things that yeah. probably nobody nobody is, is does even cares about but me like i was editing a podcast does that same podcast the other day and there was less than a frame extra audio in davinci resolve on the mm -hmm. audio than the video uh, but i was like nobody will notice if i just delete this millisecond <laughs> yeah uh but if you do, yeah. But anyways, yeah, I, yeah, it's a good, it's a good movie. I hope people check it out at New Fest. It, I think you're playing virtually. Yes, so we're playing. I, yep. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we're playing on uh, Sunday the fifteenth at one o'clock in New York. Uh, but then also virtually, I believe, for like an additional week. It yeah, something like that. that. That's yeah, always kind of how it works. Yep. But yeah, uh, I hope people check it out, especially if you just like, I don't know, maybe you have a free weekend and you just want to watch a bunch of movies. You can go check it out. I'll have the link to the, all the new fest movies and virtual lineup in the description, all the places I post this. Um, yeah. yeah, check but, it out. Uh, I'll be there. And then as will uh, Nico Tortorella will be there as well uh, for a little Q&A after the, after the film. But really quick, I wanted to ask uh, before we go. So I is so what's the so you've got New Fest and then what do you got coming up after for Mattachine Family or whatever else you're working on? So we have this weekend we have New Fest and then we have we're actually in Newport Beach on Friday in California. And then next week we're opening Outshine, which is the LGBTQ film festival in Miami. And after that, I believe we have the Melbourne Queer Film Festival. And then I think maybe a few more in the spring, but for the most part, that's it. So we've done our, this will be, I think New Fest will be like our 30th film festival that we've been in. So yeah, it's like coming, it's more coming to an end, I guess with this, this weekend's kind of our, I, I feel like this next week, 
with those three film festivals are, are kind of our last, it's our last big week, especially I think that these will be the, some of the last ones that I'll be attending. And then hopefully Mattachine Family, we're still having active conversations with a number of distribution companies. So we're hoping to like have a bigger announcement, I think in the next like two months or so of when everybody can go check it out. Yeah, if I, I don't know if movie people are going to be there, movie sales representatives, but I would think those would go fit right in the wheelhouse. Um, right. I, yeah, it just seems like, I don't know, it just seems like something movie would release and maybe like do a little movie notebook article on it and everything would be nice. Right. They've been releasing a lot of good movies and I think they should pick it up if just based on what I've got from yeah. the movie itself. I hope people check it out, whether it's virtual. I hope people actually actually go to New Fest physically because I know I've covered all these festivals virtually from pretty much right where I'm sitting now. But I, I don't know. I, I, I kind of want to go to festivals again when, when, uh, when it's a little less crazy, uh, when it's a little less crazy schedule-wise. Maybe AFI Fest. Anyways, that's not the... Uh, point, but I hope people check this out. All of links to everything, trailer, ticket links, everything in the description of the YouTube video. Let's see, Spotify for podcasters, uh, article, you name it, it'll all be in there. But yeah, thanks so much, Andy, for joining me and taking so much time out of your busy schedule today. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for chatting as well and watching the film. And for anybody watching or listening, you can follow. Mattachine family on Instagram or Andy Valentine on Instagram with two L's where I will constantly be posting about the movie until the end of my life. I feel like I will <laughs> now just it will be every year I will be posting about Mattachine and this year I just post about it every day. Uh, but Mattachine family's Instagram is where you'll find all the, the latest news and, and other interviews and stuff about the movie. So go check it out. Yeah, I'll have links to that in the description as well. You on threads yet? We are on threads, yeah. I'll, I'll include that in the description too. Yeah, cool. But until right, next great. time.